I'm Natalie Patterson and this is the Warehouse on Prime, which is the headquarters for Sister Support, a nonprofit that is based here in Pasadena. I was born in a really small town called Kokomo, Indiana, which is in the Midwest. It's cornfields and poverty. I came here when my parents got divorced, so I was a kid. Um, but yeah, I've been here a long time. Oh, that's a long story, but um, I went to a lot of different schools as a kid. My mom's a single mom. My father um, was in Indiana struggling with a drug addiction, and my mom wanted me in the best school possible. Um, and my older sister was going to South Pasadena High School, and my mom was like, this is a great school district, and there's a lot of ability to flourish and have a great education and go to college, and that was really her priority. And so I went to South Pass, and then of course was introduced to Pasadena because every game we had for every sporting event was in some way connected to Pasadena and then developed a lot of friends here also. Um, after high school, I went to Cal State LA um, for a year, and then I fell in love with poetry, and I've been doing that ever since. For me, my journey has been about creating a life I love um, and living on my own terms and not seeing the limitations of society and race and gender and all of those things, but being able to live beyond them. And so being an artist for me is about freedom and about being able to tell the truth um, and be happy still. I think an artist has to be relevant. Um, and relevant is relative, right? So it depends on where you are and who you are and how you're experiencing things. And so because I'm a black woman in America right now, yeah, my work is aggravated and, and agitated and, and full of pain and questions and seeking answers and demanding answers and, and love and hurt and pain and, and all the stuff in between. So yeah, it's relevant um, for sure. So the Warehouse on Prime is kind of like an adult playground, is really, was kind of my artistic dream. Um, our, the founder of Sister Support, um, we had a meeting and she asked me what my dream was and I said to have space. And so she said, find it, and, and we found this wonderful place. Um, and we do a bunch of programming all around um, developing ourselves and, and just giving people, number one, space to be safe um, but also space to explore and so we do things like if someone has a dream or they have a vision or they have a goal we want to help them attain it and so whether that's producing a music video and you have the space to do that or one of my workshops whether it's makeup or vulnerability and integrity or a poetry class or a comedy show or a brunch with a chef and partnering with Whole Foods um, we want to create experiences that are meaningful for people that we care about because I'm an artist um, and because we are really non-traditional in our approach, we want to be as organic as possible. So we don't have hours. We do things when we're committed to them um, and we try to communicate those obviously in advance. We don't do anything like tomorrow night we go do a thing. Um, we do things in advance, but um, if you follow us on Facebook or you go to our website, which is sistersupport.com, you can find out um, scheduling and, and what's coming up. Um, so I teach period because I want people to be their best and I want them to have the freedom to do whatever they want and so whatever that expression is whether it's poetry or makeup or dance or whatever it is whatever I'm passionate about I'm probably gonna be teaching a class and so um, I was fortunate to have a really wonderful situation with Sephora um, for a year and be able to go to their headquarters and explore all their makeup and their best artists and get all of these techniques and so what is the point of me learning these things if I don't pass them on to other people um, and so makeup really is about an expression of how you want to outwardly feel um, and so some people choose to wear none and I think that's great and amazing I don't wear makeup every day today I'm have way less makeup on than I do a lot of other times but I think you have to do what makes sense for you and so it's really about technique is the biggest thing and using colors that represent who you are and how you want to feel so there are no rules um, other than do what makes you feel fly i distinctly remember it in 10th grade like having a clear love of poetry because this girl in my english class raquel was so good at poetry and I remember looking at her and being like dang I want to do that and be like but I can't do that that's not for me that's not for me um but it wasn't until college that 
I understood that what I had always been doing was poetry. And so I think that's a testament to like, if no one ever tells you that something is possible, you don't know that it is. I had always been writing my entire life. I had always kept a journal. And it wasn't until college that I realized, oh, this is poetry and like, maybe I could be that. Oh, the first time I was on stage was tragic. I mean, let's be honest. I don't even remember what the poem was, but I do remember like shaking in places I didn't know could shake, in places I didn't know I had. Like the back of my knee was shaking back and forth. And I was like, I didn't know my knee could do that. And it was like, just everything was shaking and the paper was shaking and I thought I was gonna die, but then I wasn't finished with the poem. And I was like, well, maybe I should just stop right now. It was a very tragic situation, but what I do remember from it is that as soon as I sat down, I took a breath and I was like, I can't wait to do this next week. So I ran the nation's largest poetry venue, which is called the Poetry Lounge um, in Hollywood. Um, and that was like, that was essentially where I grew up through poetry. So I was there for 10 years um, and I hosted for several years and, and was the first female producer. Um, and so that was the click that I needed at the time, I think at the point when I wanted more than was available in an open mic space, you kind of have to be a lone ranger. You have to see what you're made of. And so I think of that time period of like, kind of like high school. And then the graduation was figuring out what college I wanted to go to and, and how I wanted to do it. And so several years ago, I branched out on my own um, and left all of that behind. and was like, oh God, what do I do? And how do I do it? Um, and that was a really fun and terrifying process to figure out who I wanted to be as an artist without the support of a huge community. I do, I have several collections of poetry um, and I have been included in several journals and, and different things like that. So yeah, I have a lot of published work. What is next? That's always the question. Um, I don't know, I'm trying to stay present and trying to focus on what is important right now. I think my whole life I've always been looking ahead um, and I think some of that makes you lose the magic of what's happening right now. And so I'm just being with right now. Magic is coming, but I don't, I don't know what it's called or what it looks like. And it doesn't matter because I'll be there when it shows up.